all laws will disappear and the professions will disappear that are no longer valid, such as stockbrokers, bankers, advertising, gone forever because it's no longer relevant. What the Venus Project proposes is an entirely different system that's updated to present day knowledge. We've never given scientists the problem of how do you design a society which would eliminate boring and monotonous jobs, that would eliminate accidents in transportation, that would enable people to have a high standard of living, that would eliminate poisons in our food, that would give us other sources of energy that are clean and efficient. We can do that out there. The major difference between a resource-based economy and a monetary system is that a resource-based economy is really concerned with people and their well-being, where a monetary system has become so distorted that the concerns of the people are really secondary, if they're there at all. The products that are turned out are for how much money you can get. If there is a problem in society and you can't earn money from solving that problem, then it won't be done. The resource-based economy is really not close to anything that's been tried. And with all our technology today, we can create abundance. It could be used to improve everyone's lifestyle. Abundance all over the world if we use our technology wisely and maintain the environment. It's a very different system, and it's very hard to talk about because the public is not that well enough informed as to the state of technology. At present, we don't have to burn fossil fuels. We don't have to use anything that would contaminate the environment. There are many sources of energy available. Alternative energy solutions pushed by the establishment, such as hydrogen, biomass, and even nuclear, are highly insufficient, dangerous, and exist only to perpetuate the profit structure that industry has created. Now, America is inclined toward fascism. It has a propensity by its dominant philosophy and religion to uphold the fascist point of view. American industry is essentially a fascist institution. If you don't understand that, the minute you punch that time clock, you walk into a dictatorship. We're given notions about the respectability of work, and um, I really look at it as being paid slavery. They're brought up to believe that you shall earn your living by the sweat of your brow. That holds people back. Freeing people from drudgery, repetitive jobs which make them ignorant. You rob them. In our society, that is a resource-based economy, machines free people. You see, we can't imagine that because we've never known that kind of world. If we look back at history, we see a very clear pattern of machine automation slowly replacing human labor. From the disappearance of the elevator man to the near full automation of an automobile production plant, the fact is, as technology grows, the need for humans in the workforce will continually be diminished. This creates a serious clash, which proves the falseness of the monetary-based labor system. For human employment is in direct competition with technological development. Therefore, given the fundamental priority of profit by industry, people through time will be continually laid off and replaced by machine. When industry takes on the machine, instead of shortening the workday, they downsize. You lose your job. So you have a right to fear machines. In a high technology, resource based economy, it is conservative to say that about 90% of all current occupations could be phased out by machines, freeing humans to live their life without servitude. For this is the point of technology itself. When you have machines that clean out sewers, it frees a human being from doing that. So look at machines as extensions of human performance. Furthermore, 
Many occupations today will have simply no basis to exist in a resource-based economy, such as anything associated with the management of money, advertising, along with the legal system itself. For without money, a great majority of the crimes that are committed today would never occur. Virtually all forms of crime are a consequence of the monetary system, either directly or by neuroses inflicted through financial deprivation. Therefore, laws themselves could eventually become extinct. Instead of putting up a sign, drive carefully, slippery when wet, put abrasive in the highway so it's not slippery when wet. And if a person gets in a car that drunk and the car oscillates a great deal, there's a little pendulum that swings up and back and that'll pull the car over to the side. Not a law. Solution. Put sonar and radar in automobiles so they can't hit one another. Man-made laws are attempts to deal with occurring problems and not knowing how to solve them, they make a law. If people have access to the necessities of life without servitude, debt, barter, trade, they behave very differently. You want all these things available without a price tag. Now then, you've got to have a price tag. Well, what will motivate people? A uh, man gets everything he wants, he just lay around in the sun. This is the myth they perpetuate. People in our culture are trained to believe that the monetary system produces incentive. If they have access to things, why should they want to do anything? They will lose their incentive. That's what you're taught to support the monetary system. When you take money out of the scenario, there would be different in incentives, very different incentives. When people have access to the necessities of life, their incentives change. What about the moon and the stars? New incentives arise. If you make a painting that you enjoy, you will enjoy giving it to other people, not selling it. I think most of the education that I've seen today is essentially producing a person for a job. It's very specialized. They're not generalists. People don't know a lot about a lot of different subjects. I, I don't think you could get people to go to war if, if they knew a lot about a lot of things. I think education is mostly rote and they're not taught how to solve problems. They're not given the tools emotionally or within their own field of how to do critical thinking. A resource-based economy, the education would be very different. Our society's major concern is mental development and to motivate each person to their highest potential. Because our philosophy is the smarter people are, the richer the world, because everybody becomes a contributor. The smarter your kids are, the better my life will be because they'll be contributing more constructively to the, to the environment and to my life because everything that we devise within a resource-based economy would be applied to society. There would be nothing to hold it back. Patriotism, weapons, armies, navies, all that is a sign that we're not civilized yet. Kids will ask their parents, didn't you see the necessity of the machines? Dad, couldn't you see that war was inevitable when you produce scarcity? Isn't it obvious? Of course the kid will understand that you were pinheads, raised merely to serve the established institutions. We're such an abominable, sick society that we won't make the history book. They just say that large nations took land from smaller nations, used force and violence. You'll get history talked about as corrupt behavior all the way along until the beginning of the civilized world. That's when all the nations work together. World unification, working toward common good for all human beings and without anyone being subservient to anyone else. Without social stratification, whether it be technical elitism or any other kind of elitism eradicated from the face of the earth. The state does nothing because there is no state. Because there is no state. 
The system I advocate, a resource-based global economy, is not perfect. It's just a lot better than what we have. We can never achieve perfection.